Hey, Gloria. Hey. We gotta stop meeting oh, like this. She's, she's got puppies. Okay. Pug, hey, Pop. Pug. Hey. Don't eat me alive. So I printed them and got on the road to Juliet because I wanted to give y'all. And I, I went to Amber's first. Um, and I'm just going down the road. Let me find you. I just have my notes. Okay, you're 32. You're the second highest that I've tested. I was afraid of that. Um, I haven't had a chance. I just saw that number. Um, this is measuring total chromium. So you have 12.2 total chromium, 9.8 of it's hexavalent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is chromium zero or chromium three, but it might be chromium zero. But this is 490 times over the California public health limit. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you this what happened to Casey. I knew when he died it wasn't fine. I knew when everybody on this road was dying it wasn't damn fine. And I guarantee you they didn't test none of them damn wheels. <sighs> You're not drinking the water right. No. Mm -mm. I got bottled water in there and I got gallon water and I got all that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing for us. All right. We appreciate it. Bye, Gloria. There's no poisoned water in God's kingdom. And God doesn't wish that the people of the earth or God's creation would drink that water. Over and over again, we're promised living, clean water. To keep water clean is to live into the gospel of Jesus Christ. Plant Shears, the, the largest coal burning facility in the Western Hemisphere, right? It's certainly the biggest one in the country. Everyone that is living within an area of about two mile radius of the plant property receives their drinking water from private wells that are in the same aquifer that that coal ash is submerged 75 feet into. Federal rules came down in 2015 that required all of these electric utilities to have to start putting monitoring wells around their, their plant property and disclosing the information publicly, right, on their website. And um, a few months after they installed those wells, they started buying up property adjacent to the plant. And that's the first time that our organization really started looking into this. And the stuff that we found in those tests were certainly not things that we would want to drink. Aluminum, mercury, arsenic, barium, boron, cobalt, lead, manganese, strontium, sulfate, chloride. This can cause cancer, neurologic issues, reproductive issues. It can delay mental growth in children and stunt physical growth. Cause gastrointestinal issues on down the line. The most concerning thing that we're finding in drinking water wells is a chemical or a heavy metal called hexavalent chromium. There's no federal standard for hexavalent chromium on its own. There's two states in the union that have applied limits to hexavalent chromium. Does anybody know a movie called Aaron Brockovich? Yeah. So because of the Brockovich case, California put a limit on the amount of hexavalent chromium that could be acceptable in drinking water. That limit is 0 0.02 parts per billion. We found as high as 10.4 parts per billion in Juliet. That's 505 times the California limit. Yes, sir. Have you tested any wells on uh, Dance Ferry Road? Yes, sir. Uh, are they good or bad? The most contaminated well that I've tested is on Dance Ferry Road. Most of the contaminated ones on Dance Ferry Road? 
Street. Have you tested any on McCracken Street? I, I think I've tested the majority of houses on McCracken Street. Uh, this district here that you live probably brings in more tax money than any district in Monroe County. So why can't they use some of that Georgia Power tax money to build water lines? Exactly. Well, the biggest problem Will. is... Will. That's right. Will. The biggest issue for bringing water up here is the amount of the distance he was talking about. Uh, you're talking about $150,000 for every mile of water line. So you're talking about hundreds of thousands just to get it in the area. That's right. To save a few lives, it's, it's the way of what is now causing cancer. If you put money value on everything, how much money value is on one lot? I didn't say I wasn't willing to do it, sir. I, you know, I'm just, that's, you know, that's not really fair to, to, to say, hey, that I'm, this is, right now is just when I'm learning. I came here tonight to listen and to learn. Yes, sir. He cared enough to show up and listen to y'all. Thank you for that. We need five year plans. We need immediate plans. I think they're here. Um, my dad helped to build Georgia Power in the 80s, and um, it was a huge employer in this community. I think Georgia Power has positively impacted the community, um, the amount of taxes that go towards, you know, the community and um, what that money is used for, but now I think people are starting to understand that, you know, what, what amount of money makes any water contamination worth it. About 1880, the very first coal-fired electric generating plants were started early on, even back in the UK, they recognized the fact that coal ash is really bad. They had to stop the issue of that coal ash flying around and people breathing it in and getting in their eyes, et cetera. So they came up with, which all of us would, we just said, well, we need to stop the stuff from flying around, well, let's get it wet. And obviously, the more of it you create, you end up realizing, well, we need to dig a pit and uh, put it in there and keep water on top of it. And then we dump it in there, it gets wet and we're all good. The only problem with that is that it created a different kind of problem, one that's not quite as obvious, but is just as sinister. So you said you've been here since 2013. 13. Do you drink the tap water or drink bottled water? I drink tap water like it's going out of style. Yeah. You cook with it too? I know you haven't been to the meetings, but do you have a general idea of what we're doing and why we're doing it? Somewhat I've been reading what Pam's been putting on the Juliet News. Me and my husband both are kind of like upset about it because if that's the case for me, I've never used a hysterectomy. We're pretty upset because we never got to have a kid again there. Yeah. I, and then we don't understand why because we both have children with other people. And then all of a sudden we can't have none together. Do you have any other health issues or is that kind of right? I have two tumors on my thyroid as well. Have they done any blood work on you for heavy metals? No, they have not. You got insurance? Mm -hmm. You need to ask them to. Okay. Can you help me turn that on cold? What we know and what we can prove, is the problem is, is that that ash pond, this is the, the aquifer, right? The bottom of that ash pond is submerged about 25 feet into that aquifer. There's no liner, right? There's nothing protecting it. So that's the same aquifer that you're drawing your, your drinking water well, right? It's well established that coal ash is toxic. It's well established that some of the heavy metals can uh, either dissolve or move rapidly through water systems and that 
different people are going to be affected at it by different ways. And so what we're taking samples of, this is for hexavalent chromium, mm -hmm. this is for sulfate, and this is for like nickel, lead, mercury, all your, your typical heavy metals, okay? Some of these people are sick because they're just sick, but you know, when you hear out of 90-ish houses that I've tested, and well over 50% of the people have some sort of chronic illness that, according to symptoms and what I've researched on toxicology of these things, could be linked to some of these coal ash constituents. Here's this. It's just an information sheet about what we're doing. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Fletcher Samson. Hey, y'all. I'm uh, exhausted. <laughs> How are y'all? We're doing good. You need something else to drink? Not your water if you've got 17. Hey, let me tell you. We have our new machine. Okay, good. High five. It's bittersweet because a lot of these people have welcomed me into their homes and, you know, broken bread with me and introduced me to their friends and to their family, but under circumstances that I'd really rather not have met them under, uh, which is, you know, they want answers to, you know, why is my daughter born with cancer or, you know, why does my son have cancer or why am I dying? kind of thing and you know I while I'm not able to give them all the answers right I'm able to start giving them more answers than what they had before yes. you got know health issues <laughs> yeah um I've had breast cancer but colonoscopy two years ago and they got six polyps off how do I turn on the cold water yeah. And I don't know if this is water, but with me, I've been getting like random, like skin rashes. Like, yes, like here, I'll get them like in my hairline. Yeah, that's you and everybody else. When I went to Emory for my pituitary tumor, they were all like trying to figure out how, pretty much where it came from, because the type I have, they said they don't normally find until you're in your fifties or sixties, because it's just a slow growing. They're still, like I said, they still were trying to figure out where, what caused it to grow so, so fast. On January 2nd, I had an MRI done and it showed uh, concerns for sarcoma, which is a very rare cancer. Um, and then, what, last week I had a CT scan and there's four nodules in my lung. We don't know what they are yet, um, but yeah. I mean, I know you can't tell, Fletcher, but how long do you think it's been in the water, say, around here? Decades. Think it's been that long? Yeah. So I've probably been drinking it for 14 years. Yeah. yeah that's crazy, man. That's crazy to think about that. Regardless of, you know, the, the source or whether or not we're able to prove beyond any shadow of any doubt that like the same stuff that's leaking out of those ponds in the monitoring wells, the same thing that's showing up in the well is actually from, you know? It, it's more that the stuff that is in the well, regardless of where the source is, is killing people. Everyone here in our community, because we live so far out from everything, we rely on what's in the ground. And to know that that is contaminated is hard. Are you familiar with what's going on with the contaminated water? Yes. Um, are y'all familiar with the groundwater issues we're having out here? I've heard. Okay. This meeting will inform you of everything you need to know about what's going on. Okay. He, us two will be there. He, he developed a very rare form of leukemia 10 years ago. Yeah. And we don't know. Yeah. We have 60 acres, yes. borders Georgia, yeah. you know. Hey, how are you? Good. Are you familiar with what's going on with the local water? What? Are you familiar with what's going on with the local water? My husband's retired from plant share. Okay. So, so I you know guys... all about Georgia Power and all that good stuff down there going on at the, with the plant and everything. Yep. Yeah. Um, would you be interested in coming to a meeting where we can explain what's I've going on? I've already seen the meetings and called the post on it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to believe that you would allow things to go like that if you know that it's contaminating your neighbors. As soon as I found out the issue, my first thoughts were, 
what can I do to fix it and who do I have to talk to? I need more information. Um, so I made sure whatever I had to do, I was at those meetings. Um, And, um, I know John has five and I have four and um, I haven't got my water test back yet but it's especially concerning to me that my girls have been drinking that for five years um, you know listening to the State of the Union address this week President Trump said that one of his um, goals is to get internet out to rural areas well if his goal is to get internet how much more important is water so um, you know contact your state and not even just state but like i sent a letter to president trump today like i'm really trying everything i can um, how can they choose a, one plant to make them fix it correctly and don't make the other plants do it because of people like y'all in this room we know that public pressure like what y'all are doing tonight changed the plan at plant branch their plan was to leave it in place there. You know, we decided to accept their plan to cap this particular, this particular coal ash pond in place. <laughs> we, well, we, we accepted their plan. If they wanted to excavate that and line it, and they presented that, that would have been something that we could have voted on and made a decision. It would be, you know, so I, I imagine, a, 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 probably another billion dollars maybe two, to do that so large. Uh, so, but that, that was not the plan that they wanted to move forward with. The EPD is making the decision on that, and if the EPD affirms that that's the way to go, then that will be what happens. Even though Georgia Power made the request just to cap it off and not put a liner? Our job, is to, make, our job is to make sure that they're in compliance. So how do we how do we throw a wrench in that and stop that plan in light of all this new evidence that's come out? Yeah, the EPD will make the decision. So it's the EPD that's your next stop. Ratepayers aren't required to pay for environmental compliance, especially if it's something that they've known is an issue for decades and not done anything about. And so for him to say, you know, if Georgia Power would have come to him with a different plan, then he would have provided funding for that, which is I think verbatim what he said. Um, that's shocking. And y'all are across the street from the entrance to the plant, correct? Right, right. Okay, all right. I will see you um, in about five, maybe six minutes. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Okay, all right, bye. All right, bye-bye. Okay, okay, so look, you're SCH 33. It is tied at the very highest that we have found so far. The worst? Yeah. Wow. Congratulations to us. What are we, <laughs> what's going on? Y'all are directly in between the ash pond and the, and the river, right? And, that, and that's when you know, I came out here, I told you that's what I was worried about, right? And you, you, it's a deep well, right? 350 feet. Essentially, there's only two states in the union that have put a limit on hexavalent chromium. Georgia's obviously not one of them, mm -hmm. right? California, based on the Brockovich case, decided that the one in a million cancer risk is 0 0.02. Then we have 10.4. You're, you're at about one in 2,000. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One in 2,000. I was hoping for better. Right. Mm. We've been drinking it for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. What uh, are people's um, alternatives? Where do, where do you move against somebody like George Power, you know, when well, you're running into this? There's legal avenues that y'all can take, you know, that's, that's an option. There is legislative stuff that we're trying to get them to excavate and remove. You know, you've heard it all, and I've heard it all. I've talked to an awful lot of people who have sold out or what's been going on, and I've heard a lot of, of things hearsay about, you know, what George Power will or will not do. There's a lot of urban legends and everything yeah. like that yeah. around well, there. I've talked to people specifically, not like okay. it's not like yeah, I yeah. didn't hear yep. from the next guy, but he was really surprised, and this was a year and a half ago, two years ago, he was really surprised that I was down here because he told me George Power wanted everything between them and the river. I bet they did. And now, but they've never approached us. 
you know, they've never approached us. So they got a lot okay. of they got a lot of media right. heat. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Go yeah. Ahead. So they got a lot of media heat when they started buying this house, and they stopped. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and, and so yeah, it was too. You know, it, it was not a good look. Okay. Several years ago, and it, and it went on for a long time. Georgia Power spent a lot of money buying up property around the plant, and they paid multiples of what the property was worth. They installed the groundwater monitoring wells in 2015, and literally one, one person was telling me that her grandmother saw the well go in. Two months later, there was a knock on her door, right? And then literally what they would do, sometimes on the very same day of the closing, is they would go in, knock the house down, and fill the well up with cement so that Again, we believe so that no one could test and see what was there. Well, everyone that I've seen so far, they go in, tear the house down, pour the well full of concrete. Um, in put most cases, put a chain across the driveway, and in a lot of cases, put up a fence and put up no trespassing signs. You know, when you drive down Luther Smith Road and you see someone's mail where someone's mailbox used to be and then right across the street you see a monitoring well um, you, you really get an idea of the proximity of it it's like acres and acres of land that they've bought and i mean it's right down the road from our house and so i mentioned that i took my my five-year-old to the doctor I, I was driving home from the doctor's appointment already kind of shooken up about what could be going on what you know have i been giving my girls contaminated water for all these years and just kind of um kind of internally freaking out but she's in the back seat and i didn't want to you know i didn't want to concern her and i still don't want her to be really worried and then i drive by where those houses were and i see that sign and i'm just like it hit me like that's half of a mile from our house and I guess it wasn't until that point that I realized how close um, all of the contaminated water issues are to us. What's up, bro? Hey, man. What's going on? Not a whole lot. They didn't detect any chromium-3. Mm -hmm. They only detected the hex chrome, yeah. right? All right. Well, that gives us a good starting point. Thank you for doing this. Well, I mean, um, um, you know, just we've got more answers than we had, but we still don't have anywhere close to the answers. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Hey. I'll see you soon. Hey. Please tell your wife thank you for <coughs> the sacrifice. giving you. Oh yeah, I mean, she I mean, was like, she was like, you know, I didn't talk to you once on Valentine's Day. You just like passed on the You're couch. a horrible Valentine. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I need to bring her out here and meet everybody. Yeah, we'd love know? to meet her and yeah. our girls could play together. Oh yeah, I've got a little girl who's seven and a little girl who's five. <laughs> I know. There you go. <laughs> it works out. You know, I just feel like I'm, I, I just like have to keep doing this, you know what I mean? At the pace that I'm doing it. Georgia Power has applied for permits to close the ash pond. The House bill and the Senate bill that was just introduced, that will require them to put it into a lined facility, take that ash and put it into a lined facility. We will get some folks that will help us today, right? But we are going to get a lot of folks that say, well, we need to consider the facts. Here are the facts. The federal government does not treat coal ash as hazardous waste, even though it's full of known carcinogens and heavy metals and very toxic material. Um, the utility industry has lobbied heavily against regulation, right? Because of that, you have a lot of laws that are aimed at not regulating the utility. Um, one being, you know, it's cheaper to dump coal ash into a landfill here than it is household garbage. So. While all these other utilities are excavating their ash, instead of storing it on site at those plants um, away from the water in a liner, um, they're importing it to Georgia. 
Some legislators will want to pull you off to the side and talk. If you get turned around, this is the House side and this is the Senate side. You've been given this information? No, no okay, I have not. Okay, will you take it, please? Oh, I believe that. Okay, all right. You been, look, you, I, I know you know because we've been emailing you and calling you and talking to you about right, our web. I've been working with the representative on I'm just dealing with the coal ash issue. Yeah, all right. We have the report with us. We'd like you to have that. Okay. Thank you, big man. Big concern for me especially because we have, we have four little girls and we've been drinking this water and... Mine was not at their desk. Mary something, but uh, she, won't, she won't see me. She says, she's not my district. I said, that doesn't make any difference. I want her vote. That's right. Um, That's all the we are, and there's no access to public oh, water. Have they offered to run any kind of water? I've talked to my county commissioners, and they're trying to work on something, but they were quoted a rough estimate of about $30 million to bring water lines out. I didn't know if Georgia Powell had Oh, no, they have not. Okay. They're not offering anything at this point. So. They're excavating some ponds in the state, but they're not excavating plant share, and we want to know why. We, we, uh, I'm going to hear it in uh, committee. It's, it'll come to our committee, and we're going to hear some, some testimony and information about it. So I'm looking forward to getting information. This is the first, really, I don't know all what this is. So I have um, strontium, barium, sulfate, and hexavalent chromium. Wow. Sounds like scary stuff. <laughs> it is. It's very, very scary stuff. If these bills don't pass, if we're not able to like really spell it out in big block letter crayon for the people that can't read the existing federal law, um, Georgia EPD will issue the permit to close in place. Georgia Power would then have a shield saying, oh, well, we have a legal permit to sit here and pollute the groundwater in perpetuity and be a good neighbor doing it, but that's, that's we have a legal permit to do that, and so you can't touch us. We've reached out to the EPD, we've reached out to the representative, we've reached out to local. Our next step is the governor, we need help. The contamination is coming from the ash pond being submerged into our aquifer. That's the reason our water's contaminated. If it wasn't for the ash pond being in, in the groundwater in our aquifer, our water would be fine. Feeding the pets, the, the, the livestock, you know, water in the gardens, we, we need water. We cannot use our tap water anymore. So we want the ash pond excavated. We want it put in a line facility like yours in my trash that my house gets put in. I throw banana pills and stuff in my trash. I throw tea bags in my trash and I can't go just dump it in my yard. It has to go to a line landfill. Toxic coal ash could be just dropped right into the aquifer at my house. Because that's what they're doing. That's what they want to do. They want to cap it and leave it in place forever. We want it out. People are dying. They've got cancer. They can't come, couldn't even come to, to speak today. We had 15 families on Lucas Smith Road. Nine had cancer. Six died. Three are still fighting cancer. That is out of 15 families, a small little road. It's not even a mile long. It's a community, and it's not just Juliet. This is a Georgia problem. That's right. There are 19 other ash ponds. It does seem to us that um, Brian Kemp has the ability to compel EPD yes. to look at this legitimately. Monroe County is pretty Republican. How many people in here voted for Brian Kemp? And are Republican. How many people will convert to Democrat if we don't get enough help? <laughs> I was just saying if, if there was someone that we should reach out to with our policy folks and, and get more information from y'all, then we'd be happy to do Yeah, I'll write my name on here. So is it not possible to see him today? I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, he has a back-to-back -back schedule. So. What about tomorrow? I'm not able to commit to that, so. He can't be reached. And it's a shame, because I elected him. Ditto. Ditto. I want the support of the Republican Party that sits on their hand while this happens. By the way, this is, shouldn't you. be a partisan issue. This shouldn't even be a political issue. This is a moral Clean issue. Water. You need to do the right thing. EPD's not gonna do anything. These legislators aren't going to do anything. I, what they're going to do is they're going to hit me and say that this is all a political stunt. 
they were trying to like flip Monroe County, right? Like that. I mean, it's. I had two reporters call call over and be like, you know, they're they're trying to paint you as like doing this, and I'm like, doing what? Trying to flip Monroe County into like changing y'all into a bunch of liberals. <laughs> I'm, I, you gonna, know, I'm a Democrat. They're gonna start attacking me. It's, it's all a distraction from the issue. That's it's it obvious. Is. It is submerged in the aquifer. The standard for the close in place is that it cannot be in contact with groundwater. It cannot have even the possibility of coming into contact with groundwater. And they're gonna store it 25 feet into the aquifer. And we have proof yeah. of that, mm -hmm. and they're wanting more proof. The next thing they're gonna be wanting blood samples from y'all, right? And trying to prove that away. Right. We're dealing with a gigantic utility with the most powerful lobby in the state saying this is the way that it is and this is the way that we want it to go and you're dealing with a government that wants to say, all right, yes sir, we'll do that. Um, but what we're trying to tell those lawmakers and regulators is that what, what you're proposing does not follow the rule of law. And what we're trying to do right here is save everybody a whole lot of time and money and heartache, right? Because we're gonna get there, we're not going anywhere. These citizens in Juliet are not gonna shut up. And we're going to get this move to a line and cap facility. How much do you wanna fight us? We're going as fast as I can. We're going as fast as I can. We have two more bottles. Two more bottles. <laughs> you gotta find a, well, Hargrave might be able to, might yeah. be willing to do it. You might find somebody that's willing to take one. Got it? Yeah, I got it. We want the ponds to be excavated and we want clean water for the people in this community. I'd like to know what you expect the county commissioners to do. We right. had a meeting the other night. Right. And this this just came on me in the last three weeks. I sure. didn't know fly ash from wet ash, any of that stuff, but I've, I've researched a lot right. of since you brought that up. My main concern, if we got bad water out there, I want to get water to the people out there. Do anybody, do any of y'all want to pay for running water lines to me because Georgia Power contaminated my well? Let me ask you something. Do you realize all y'all people in here that are taxpayers in Monroe County? Do you realize you're subsidizing the water system in Monroe County right now? So why don't we tax and put everybody on water because heaven knows when they're going to no. get this problem. No. Hey, why don't you no. take the money you get from Georgia Power on taxes and pay for the water line? Mr. Ambrose, you asked, what do you want me to do? That was one of the first things you said when you stood up. What do you want me to do? I want you to do something. Something. We started out uh, hearing about problems with wells here in the area. We've got about 800 properties that all have a well on them that don't have any city or county water available. So we got together and, and started working on it. This is the start of a 16 to $17 million project to bring clean water to the residents around Lake Juliet. They're following all the rate rules and regulations the EPA and EPD has set up, but I think they're the rules and regulations dealing with coal ash needs to be relooked at because a lot of states are forcing them to remove it because it's some dangerous stuff and if they're going to put it right on the, the waterway like that. But our hands are tied and if we waited to put this water in until some kind of settlement was made, it might be 10 years. Given the situation, the fact that the county commissioners saw a need to be able to try to get water out to this community, 
to help them with the situation, uh, I think is wonderful. That's good. Uh, I think it's tragic that it has to happen. I think it's uh, you're, they're they're making the best of the situation given the situation that they did not create. We're very happy that our county commissioners have um, understood what's going on and are moving in the direction of getting us all water. But the reason it isn't enough is because there are 15 million tons of coal ash sitting in my backyard that are contaminating the waters in this community. And um, something needs to be done about that. They were fighting at the legislature. They were fighting, asking their representatives who were who are there to represent them, not Georgia Power, asking them to do something to make their situation better. They have been through efforts with the Riverkeeper and the Southern Environmental Law Center asking the Environmental Protection Agency to not approve the permit to allow Georgia Power to cap this pond in place without a liner. They're just trying to make things better going forward, and no one is listening. So when you're left with no other option, you file a lawsuit. This is not talking about saving some kind of rare salamander. This is about people's lives. And that's just a different thing. When most people think of environmental issues, they think, oh, it's like some tree hugger out here trying to you know, save some rare species. And it's not, I'm, I'm trying to save people. Real quick, um, do you mind if we come get another sample tomorrow? The, the experts we're working with want two samples. Yeah. If you're- It'll be locked, but you can, Pat next door will let you drive through his backyard. You can come over to my yard. Okay. All right. Cut through Pat's yard. Got it. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll do. Okay, buddy. All right. Thanks. Yes, sir. Bye. All right. Bye. Like, everybody's related. Everybody knows everybody, and everybody knows what I'm doing, and it's a special place. I just, I'm just thinking about the future. I'm going to be part of the past soon. And, um, it just worries me about, you know, the future. Will it ever be good water again? <laughs>